Unless one has an affinity for looking ridiculously foolish, it is wise not to stumble aimlessly into a fantasy football draft. The Ultimate Draft Kit from the Fantasy Footballers contains all the information you need to avoid the jeers of your enemies and to snuff out any glint of hope in their souls. Imagine the gasps those trouser-wearing turnips will emit as you make yet another triumphant draft selection. Imagine their tears forming a formidable puddle as you assemble an unstoppable force. The Ultimate Draft Kit comes bursting at the seams with fantasy goodness. When you enter the draft room, you'll feel as if you were a monstrous beast let loose in a chicken coop. Head over to ultimatedraftkit.com today. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Is it football time? <laughs> Did someone tell me? <laughs> it like- is. It is football time. <laughs> sorry, sorry, guys. I was uh, digging up a fun, a fun quote from an article. You'll hear about it in a little bit. <laughs> we'll hear about it on this show. Yes, that's kind of a weird tease. You're just looking up articles. I uh, I needed to make sure uh you'll look it's okay, a, it's, we'll, we'll wait for it. We'll yeah, wait. Yeah, I, I understand that. There's there's a player that clearly we're going to talk about. <laughs> yes, there's an important bit of news that has it caught Mike's attention. It has. <laughs> and we'll talk about it shortly. So, um welcome in one and all. Excited to have you with us. We have news to talk about. Yes. We got some mailbag, some best ball breakdown, lots of fantasy goodness on today's show. Ultimate draft kit available right now. You're heading into the weekend. You've probably got a draft. You're thinking to yourself, self, I'd like to do well at this draft. I don't know how I'm going to do that for sure. And then you're like, maybe the ultimate draft kit could help me. Mm, maybe. maybe. Yeah. No, maybe. it can. <laughs> I was going to get there, Jay, but you, just, you went right into Yes. It can. Just look. I, the people know. Yeah, yeah. It's great. Uh, UltimateDraftKit.com for your drafts and uh, Megalobull.com if you want to be a part of the largest fantasy football season-long uh, tournament-style league, which is up over 10,000 so far. Last year, it was 20. Oh, it's over 9,000. I'm going to say 22,000 because it was like 21,900 and a few. Okay. So we're going to we're gonna set the bar at 22,000. It's up over 10 right now. And you go in, you go to megalobowl.com, you pick a draft spot, and then and then you're good. And you're uh, going to draft, and uh, then you're going to try to win the league. Also, be aware when you pick a draft slot. Uh, you can scroll down. There are more dates. It, it doesn't look like there are more, but just scroll. Okay. And a uh, quick question. This one comes in from Chefster Maker. First time having a second flex spot on a roster. Any difference in draft strategy? We made this change... In conjunction with dropping kickers, I believe, in our league of records? Yes, mm-hmm. we did. And so we, we do. We have two running back, two wide receiver, two flex in our league of record. So we are in the same type of format that you are moving to. Uh, what do we think about the strategy there? I mean, I are you approaching things differently in that format? I We already know that if you're in like a three wide receiver league, the kinds of changes that that makes to your thought process. Uh, Jason. What do you think about uh, the extra flex position? I love the extra flex position. It adds, uh, you know, more depth to the starting roster. Obviously, more strategy for the later round picks. Um, and it's it's a great question to say. Well, what do I do when I go deeper? Um, and what what I've found really is, depending on whether you're in a standard league, a half PPR, or a full PPR, that second flex position it changes positions. Yes. You know, if you're in a full PPR, I'm usually going to be starting that second flex. It's going to be a wide receiver. I'd say more than usually. I'd say the the majority of the time, if it's a full PPR, it will be a wide receiver in there. Even in a half point, the majority 
of the time it's probably still going to be a a wide receiver is because once you're down to a certain tier, certain rank of wide receiver or running back, those receptions they they do matter a lot and most likely it's going to be a wide receiver. So that is my blanket statement for you uh, who's a uh Chefster maker off Instagram is just, it's you're going to want to be heavier on wide receivers. I would say it affects the way I look at depth because you have an entire additional starting opportunity here. And sometimes the mindset in a traditional league format is to go into your draft and kind of fire a few darts at the end and try to find that explosive flex player. In this format, you are going to have to start an additional player. So maybe you're not – I'm not saying you, you aren't shooting for those players, but you also have to have guys that you know you can start. You can't overload your roster with – players that are going to take a few weeks to materialize either. Sure. And the 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 flex with benefits guys that I, I talked about when I gave the the tip in our top ten show, those are players that I might be a little bit more aggressive going after and specifically not having the the true starter because I want the team to have a situation that should something break in my favor fantasy football wise you now have an extra starter. You had a you had a person who can contribute, but you're I mean, is you're one play away from this player becoming a a difference maker for your team. Any complaints about an extra flex spot in our league of record? No. I, yes. No. What? what? I have a complaint that we don't have an extra <laughs> flex you wanna, spot. Yeah, you want to you want to go triple flex? Yeah, I want to go Jason. triple flex. That's grown ups only. Yeah, I'm a grown up. I want to flex on these fools. I look. The more you add, I'm adding that to the vote this year in our league. I'm it's gonna not gonna. It, it, I, I know our league, and it's not gonna pass. I know it won't pass, but I'm voting. And you just came up with that just now. That's right. Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. That's... On the spot, that's how I make my decisions. <laughs> it removes. Some people complain about the fact that there's too much luck in fantasy football. If you add more positions to start, you are going to reduce that because it's going to take – you're going to have to play deeper players. Uh, if Jason gets his will, we're going to be playing down to the fourth, fifth string. Yeah. 36 flex spots. Sounds good to me. It's weird. I've never heard this from you. You I, just It's just you're turning over a new lead. I, I you're just, flexy I really, and you know it. I really do enjoy deeper starting rosters. I'm You know, I find like in our uh, our listener league – which is starting soon, and and I don't know if we've mentioned this on oh, yeah, yeah. the main show, but genuinely, every year it gets crazier and crazier. We had more submissions this year for our listener league than ever before. Thank you all for submitting, and all the people that did so much amazing things and sent things in, and that, you know, only yeah, we got stuff here at the studio that'll make yeah, its we, way to the Foot Clan, uh, the, the, the Foot, Foot Clan, Clan wall corner. Over yeah, we yeah. got like a like a stained glass of the. Yeah. Of the shield. I mean, just some really cool stuff. So thank, thank you, you all. We really do appreciate it. I know most all of you didn't get in because the, that's the nature of mathematics. Only a few and a lot of entries. But in that league that we play, and it's a 14-teamer so that we can get more people in the league, and it's still a double flex. So you're starting just deeper players, and I find that that's more fun. It's more fun to have to go with a nasty boy oh, that yeah. makes your lineup. <laughs> Yeah, it, it is pretty fun to be in a 14-team league. I would say that the listener league has been fun. Mm -hmm. And we have mailed everybody that's in. We have, as of this moment. That's the part you left out. Uh, like, we, we have, as of, as of this moment, there's still one spot that needs to respond. Oh, well, we're still waiting on one response. Yeah, so maybe an alternate that's will a, get in. Just for the record, that's maybe the worst thing that's ever happened, is you have all these people competing and then somebody wins – and then they don't respond to their email. Mm -hmm. It's never happened before. Stay on top of your emails, people. Not nine years. Never yeah, happened. Yeah, it has. We've had to replace before. I can't remember. Yeah, it. we've had to replace Never. before. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying it's not what you want because you don't want to get a heartfelt, like, all this time and effort put into something. and then. Yeah. But, yes, thank you. Yes. Uh, Mike and I echo that. Very amazing uh, humans out there. So let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. 
Is this the the piece of news that you were looking forward to? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not breaking this. This is all yours. <sighs> okay. Uh, so, <laughs> what's so we'll just we'll start here. We we are in the news section. We're recording this show Wednesday afternoon. So if something else had happened before uh, Thursday morning, we'll cover it later. But the big piece of news that came out was the San Francisco quarterback depth chart has been announced. Oh, great! Which I don't re remember it really being a thing. It's usually here's our starter. Everyone else is on the team. And you just you kind of know who is where, but they made an official announcement that Samuel Darnold will be the quarterback to <laughs> Trey Lance. Uh, that puts him at number three. If you're keeping track, Trey Lance was in the building on Wednesday. Three with, out of how many though? I believe three. Oh, okay. So, but you could say third best. He's mm, the third right. best. Yeah, he is not the, bad. I believe he's the third best quarterback. Oh, he was the team. third pick in the draft. So you should be the third best. Yes. He was in the building when the news broke. He was then allowed to sit out the session, and the 49ers will address the situation after practice. Is he getting d cut? No, no. They Traded? Would never, tra a, a trade would be possible. Who, who trades? <laughs> genuine question. Right. Who trades for a third-string quarterback? Like, Well, on, honest, I think... Somebody would do it, but I it, would do. Be a, it would not be a high yeah, pick. A seventh rounder. It, it's, uh, it comes down to what the NFL or, or or sorry what the 49ers are willing to uh cut their losses with cuz I, I bet there's I bet there's a, at least a handful of teams that would send a a third rounder for Trey Lance. Yes, abs like if Trey Lance were uh to go it's like just think about the quarterbacks that are drafted in the third round. Like you he's sure about that? No I, way. Yes. No I, way. Yes. You sure about that? Yeah. That makes no sense. I mean, this is when a guy, I think about the quarterbacks drafted in the third round, they don't have three years of failure to their name. Yeah, uh, they don't get beat out. But by I think that teams the can, seventh round draft pick in one season, and then a failure of Sam Darnold in the next. I think that there are plenty of of offensive guys out there that can convince themselves that they can fix Trey Lance. Oh, I agree with that. Just not the third round part. No, it's, I, I think. That makes that that would be shocking. That's way uh, day two capital. No one's given up day two capital yeah. for uh, a quarterback who's failed three years Just in a row. Give it up, well, Mike. He's, he's failed two seasons in a row, three off seasons in a row. <laughs> what <laughs> in the world is happening? I'm not the the point. I'm <clears throat> seriously. I'm not trying to support Trey Lance right now. I'm just saying what the quarterback market is for a player with uh, with his skill, with his physical skill set, and then you have. Uh, up to three more years left on his rookie deal, I think that's, that a team could be interested. But will the 49ers be willing to let him go for a third? What? I don't know. They, they, would, they Maybe. would slam the yes button as quick as humanly possible. Maybe. Maybe. That team has quarterbacks go down all the time. Like they They missed the Super Bowl because all their quarterbacks were hurt. Trey Lance is maybe the worst trade in the history of the organization. Oh, the history that is, of the NFL. Yeah, that's one of it's the worst. It's, it's got to be the worst. Hers the team is it Herschel Walker? Is that the one? Yeah, that, that, was, that was the entire draft class for Herschel Walker. At least, at least that trade had had temporary or, uh, value uh, on both sides. Well, there was yeah, that, that happened for Walker, and then it also happened for Ricky Williams. Uh, yeah, Ricky Williams. Yes, but then Herschel Walker did play football. Yes, and Ricky Williams played good football. Right, Trey Lance did not. Um. What's what is five starts? It's incredible that that the Forty ers are as good as they are, having made that move. Yeah, um, this is an overt omission or uh, admission of a, a mistake. Uh, there is no more sugar coating the Trey Lance development. He hasn't developed. He has not become the quarterback that they want. Uh, My the most fun part about this that it for our show <laughs> and for Mike's lasting love of Trey Lance is that before the NFL draft prior to that draft happening and the San Francisco 49ers taking him number three mm -hmm. you freaking hated Trey Lance <laughs> hated you you said yep. he was the most inaccurate yep. inexperienced worthless prospect and if they take him over uh was Mac that Jones, Justin, Justin, Mac Jones, Justin, Justin Fields, Fields yeah you you mm -hmm. were going to just die yeah 
And then they did it. You stayed alive, and you said, well, since I'm alive, yeah. I am going to support Trey Lance because I must have been wrong. Me, Mike, right? I'm wrong. Kyle Shanahan knows what he's talking about. I believe in him. Right. You were it, right. You were right, my man. It was the ultimate. Stick to your guns. It was the you ulti- coward. The ultimate draft a player that you don't believe in because someone else does. Does this mean? It's Kyle Shanahan. It was the third overall pick. It's Kyle Shanahan. Kyle Shanahan I fell me. for I fell for this with Sean McVay and Allen yeah. Robinson last year. Are there no genius coaches? I mean, we were talking about Brandon Staley as a genius coach. Now, Brandon right. Staley's hot. viewed as he got hot pants on. A hot mess of a coach. <laughs> Basically a great roster with hot pants on cuz he's ready to leave town. I, I mean, they have turned coach. on him. I still think he's a good coach. But, but genius you are, coaches the, the, Andy Reid is a genius coach. He, but even Andy Reid got ran out of town. That's true. That's true. Um, Trey Lance is not going to be a great dynasty player for you. And I'm speaking to everyone out there. Yeah. I, I, I Again, we, we do so many shows. We talk so much football. I don't know if I had mentioned this. But we were at some point talking about Trey Lance. Like, what do you do? If you're in a single quarterback league in dynasty, what do you do with Trey Lance? And I was a bit hyperbolically saying, I think you just drop it. Like – because if you if I drop Trey Lance right now, or let's go let's go two days ago, <laughs> two days ago when he wasn't the third string uh, quarterback, I drop Trey Lance. Half the league sees that and goes and does a, a big fab drop trying to get Trey Lance because just in case, mm-hmm. and then they hold Trey Lance for eternity <laughs> waiting for something to happen. While I'm like. Well, I'm living fancy free with my extra roster spot. Uh, you know, well, two days ago, you should have just asked for like a third rounder. Anyone want to give me a third rounder? <laughs> they won't do that in fantasy. You think someone's doing yeah. this in real life for a third rounder? <laughs> and to be clear, there there are a ton of top ten quarterback picks that don't get, of course, that don't get traded for or given an opportunity ever again. I was just looking. Jake Jake Locker was the eighth overall pick in the draft. Well, he retired. Blaine. Uh, well, he he was not given another. They didn't trade for him, right? No, Jake. But Jake Locker had the uh, Blaine Gabbert had the concussion. Problems. Did he get to start again? No. Um, did he? Did Blake play? Bortles never got to start again after he was running out of town. Right. Mariota got it last year. Uh, Trubisky got a split second in Pittsburgh. I guess uh, Josh Rosen never got another chance. Well, he got yeah. like seven hundred more chances Rosen, to be a backup. Rosen is the the closest comp to me because all those other guys had time. Like Lance has started five games or so, and he will finish his career. And he with will probably five finish. Yeah, with five I mean, starts. it's like it, that. That one's hard too because it's like saying, "Well, you just got to let him start games if he stinks." Yeah. Right. I mean, isn't that what you're saying? Uh, no, that a guy that isn't good has to start some games. I think he's more saying that we don't know what we don't know, and right. so people. Can, I wish Josh Rosen had make, started none. Yeah, people can make <laughs> I, a, a you know a bad decision of thinking they could fix him. I'm saying last year it was he had the two starts. One was in a monsoon, and then he got hurt. And then you you don't start him over Brock Purdy, who came in and played extremely well. They're just not saying this in the building. I, mean, I'd, I, I I'm not saying that Trey Lance could be successful in a different offense. He's clearly not built for the 49ers offense. I think that's the that's the headline. I mean, Jimmy Garoppolo very successful, very accurate quarterback. Right. Uh, Sam Darnold can handle that. Uh, obviously, Brock Purdy can handle that. I, I wonder. Trey Lance I just, is just not built for the accuracy. Was a problem coming into the NFL. We know. Uh, they, they, I, I believe this is common knowledge that they said uh, that they were between Mac Jones and Trey Lance during that. Would have been such a better pick. Mac Jones would be – Yeah, I think he'd be a star right now if he ended yeah. up going to Kyle Shanahan's 100%, system. 100%. 100%. Miles Sanders, uh, there's some other quick injury news. Miles Sanders absolutely ready for week one. That's great. More Panthers news, not so great. DJ Chark, hamstring injury. Yeah. Didn't practice. So I'm going to stop talking about players. <laughs> Chris Evans could serve, serve as the team's preferred passing down back. This is an athletic report. Um it's it seems to be trending that way. The uh Travion Williams, I think, was kind of the he was the de facto number two. The team has had praised him for his pass blocking and things like that. Uh but he got hurt and now 
he's missed most of training camp. And do you Chris care? Evans. Do you care about Chris Evans in drafts? I not maybe probably not in redraft, but right. unless we get like a for sure Chris Evans is locked in as the number two guy, but I don't think the team will even say that. I don't even think they know. I don't. You know what I mean? Right. Like they might have who's up next, but I don't think that they will have someone that they think is locked in for the yeah, season. Yeah. This this is why drafting insurance running backs is it can be a fool's errand of, well, Chris Evans is the number two right now. Sweet. I'm going to stash Chris Evans, and then if Joe Mixon, time, or Joe Mixon misses time, all of a sudden it's just like Chris Evans isn't even the guy to have. It ends up being And that's Chase. because of being the number two right now to, to Mixon represents being a pass catcher, whereas if Mixon goes down, they're looking for something else to fill that role. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, Jerome Ford should be ready for week one for the Browns. They're okay. hopeful that he'll be ready. He's another guy that he's going to fill in the gaps of, of what Nick Chubb can't handle or when he needs a break. Uh, TJ Hawkinson. Yeah. Well, missed practice due to lower back stiffness, which I, as far as I know, is not a, a kind of a follow-up side effect to no. an ear infection. No, this, this is unrelated. Not he had the ear, he, he had the ear infection that was causing equilibrium problems kept him out of a lot of uh the the time with the team got back and now he's dealing with lower back stiffness so he's he's just missed missed quite a bit of time I don't think it's a huge deal I mean obviously we saw when he came over and had had no time with this team last year they were just you're out there here's playbook we're gonna throw it to you a ton um and I, I expect him you know to still be out there but it's you know it's good opportunity to get targets going elsewhere to like Jordan Addison who's back like Jordan Addison and Jordan or like, Ad or, like or Jordan Addison Mr. Addison mm -hmm. um Mr. Addison no Boston mm. okay mm. all right I just mm. had to try on a good matrix <laughs> you, you sure that TJ Hawkinson's <laughs> earache and backache aren't like kind of contract aches uh, I do, I do not, I it's do his, not believe they are. Cause there were some rumors about that. And, and this is his last year. He's on a contract season. This, I, I'm sure he'll already there for Hawkinson. I'm yeah. sure he'll get a big contract. He's not a running back. Cole Komet got a big contract. A lot of, a lot of these tight ends leave though. Dalton Schultz didn't get a big contract. Trey Burton didn't get a big contract. Yeah. I don't know. He's going to make a lot of money though. He'll get a, he'll get a massive contract. Uh, oh. From the Vikings, though, I'm saying. Oh, you're just saying, will the Vikings pay? I I do think they will because when teams invest the draft capital in a trade, they usually want to retain that player. Uh, but we'll see. TBD. Corey Davis stepping away from football at the age of 28. Mm. He left 10.5 million dollars on the table for 2023, Ooh. although he might have been cut and chose this as a different option. Quiz: How much money has Corey Davis made in his career? Because I have that answer mm -hmm. for you. Uh. So Corey Davis was he was a top ten pick, yep, in the NFL draft, number so five overall. Number f okay, so number five overall. So you just right there, you make a a really good amount of money on your first contract. The Jets, if I recall, they when when he got the deal from them, we were like, what? But it was the Jets tax because at the time they were a bad team. Uh, to so total, I'm gonna go. 30 mil? Ooh, I'm going north of that. I'm going... You're going 50? I'm going... going 55. 55! <laughs> $52 million. Oh! 52. I hope it's not prices right Yeah, rules. no, it, it always is. And Damn. you lost. So I lost. <laughs> <laughs> Any other news, gentlemen? And like Mike said, we're recording this late afternoon on Wednesday. We're getting ready to get out of town uh, for the live show on Saturday. So uh, any news we miss here, we'll cover it uh, on the show tomorrow. Or that we record yeah. tomorrow. All right, that was today's News and Notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Quick break and back with the mailbag. All righty, Mike. Are you primed and ready? I mean, I know the hair's looking looking ready. It's it's quaffed. Only Mike can do that. Is that a, is that a word? I think so. Okay. I tried it out. I don't, is it, Jason, try to spell that word for us. Q U A F T is how I spelt it. Ooh, I would have gone F F E D. Okay. I think it, uh, that's that, that's different. A large, wild, untamed amount of. Oh hair. well, it is certainly tamed. Also, Q U A F T. Oh, you got it right. Yeah, nice. I'm the greatest speller alive. <laughs> You're a hero. All right, Mike. Here we go. Mailbag. Mailbag. Oh. 
You people better be ready for the mailbag on Saturday's live show, by the way. Oh, yeah. Seriously, there's going to be a thousand people. Yeah. You, you all are going to be doing the mailbag drop live, singing it out. So prepare your vocal cords. All right. Uh, Instagram question from Tim Brody. By the way, if you have a question for the show, go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, or dial a voicemail hotline here, 302-464-TFFB. Do you believe in Jerry Judy? This question comes in from Tim Brody, 12-12-12. Yeah. Unequivocally, yes. It's a loaded question. I 100% believe in Jerry Judy. Okay. I... Think, I don't know if he believes in me. I think I believe in Jerry Judy, but I'm not 100% sure that's just me not believing in Cortland Sutton, and so it's just pushing me to want to believe in Jerry Judy. He was, at the end of last year, was the best wide receiver for the Denver Broncos, had himself a fine few-game stretch over there for fantasy. Cortland Sutton is the one making some headlines over in training camp. I haven't seen a ton of... On Jerry Judy, the opportunity is great. Sean Payton, can he fix Russell Wilson in the offense? I would say my belief in Jerry Judy is sub 50%. I, I, I definitely believe in Jerry Judy. I've seen him. Like I, that's, I, that's exactly I know, what I'm, why. I know he him. exists. <laughs> I, you know, so this isn't like, do you believe, believe in Bigfoot oh. or, di or dinosaurs? Oh, yeah. well, you got to make these questions more specific because yeah. I definitely believe in him. Um, Thank you for once again <laughs> contributing to the podcast. Uh, I, I think he is a fine wide receiver, too. I believe he'll finish probably around that number. He was the wide receiver 21 last season. The offense can't be worse. And I know sometimes we say that we, oh, it couldn't be worse than what Big Ben was at the end of his career. And But even then, it was like, no, it could be. A rookie, Kenny Pickett, yeah. could be worse, and we could see that. The worst-case scenario is that Russell Wilson sucks. Like, he sucked last year, and he's just lost it. He's toast, he's gone, he's done. And in that situation where he still sucks, the offense goes from Nathaniel Hackett to – Sean Payton, and I think it gets better with the same sucky Russell Wilson. <laughs> does that make sense? It does. You said suck a lot. Yeah. Well, I mean, they did. So what's your percentage belief in Jerry Judy? Not the human Not who you are convinced exists. I am fully convinced. Okay. But um, his I, chances for fantasy football. I, I think it's 65% that he's a wide receiver two or better. Okay. Yeah, I think he's going to be great. And to be clear, Cortland Sutton does not have to, as you would say, suck. For Jerry Judy to be great, that is not those things don't have to happen. Uh, sure, together like Jerry Judy can be great, and Cortland Sutton can bounce back if you believe in him. Um, I watched enough Jerry Judy. And that's what I thought you were saying. By the way, I thought you were saying you watched him, you saw him. Yeah, I did. And then you, but but as fully a we're saying the same thing. I'm fully convinced <laughs> that he exists. That he is real. Now have, but have you been to a game with him? I haven't seen him in person. Mm, so yeah, it could be CGI. Yeah. Um, he was uh, he was good last year, as good as you could be in what that offense uh, provided. He is a big play guy. Uh, we saw Cortland Sutton struggle immensely. I don't buy the hype on Cortland Sutton. I think there's a chance he's better because you can't be worse. But I don't buy. I don't have any reason to believe that Jerry Judy, who was great on the field, doesn't benefit from all those things that you're saying. But somehow Cortland Sutton's going to stifle him when Sutton wasn't good on the field. So I think Jerry Judy is going to be a great pick. Now, right now he's going at five oh seven on sleeper. No, thank you. But four oh one on ESPN. Oh no, even worse. What is that? Where does that put him in the range of? If he's in the fifth, that's that's the Tyler Lockett zone or the Darren Waller zone for me. So Jerry Judy right now is being drafted on sleeper as the wide receiver twenty three. The guys around him, you got DJ Moore and Terry McLaurin just ahead of him, and just behind him, you have Drake London and Christian Watson. Those so are, would you rather take the shot on the sophomore wide receiver breakouts? I would. Yes. No way. I think I think I see it kind of how ADP is. I would rather have DJ Moore and Terry McLaurin ahead, and I think Jerry Judy. It's it's fine to take him above Drake London and Christian Watson. I agree that all five of those guys are about in the same odds of having a good season. Just take so, your favorite. You just take your favorite. Yeah, I don't think he's mispriced. So uh, it kind of depends on whether you believe Russ has got a shot. 
at least Russ has done like you're betting on Desmond Ritter, right? With Drake London mm-hmm. and, sure. and no passing offense. Mm-hmm. Betting on Howell. Howell. Uh, what are the other what are the other quarterbacks in the mix for the, that group? It sounds like a bunch of guys were Jordan like, Love. Jordan Love. So Russ fits right in. Well, you're betting But a, with better upside. Yeah, well, you have a little bit of a mystery box for Russ those other throws a great deep ball too. Historically. I'm not yeah. talking about last yeah. year, but like even last year, Jerry Judy had good games on a team that could not score. Yeah. And Tim Patrick's gone. Consolidation yeah. of targets lets both of those guys potentially be To be fair, Tim Patrick was also gone last year. Yeah. He was. Yeah. Well, where was Sutton then? Poor Fireball. Poor Fireball. Yeah. Maybe we should not have called him that. <laughs> I don't remember him having any injuries before we called him that. No. He was good before we... Then he was, was Tim like, Patrick. We're like, he's good. He's like, he's a Fireball. And then <laughs> got too hot. Mm. Tried to run too fast. Tried to live up to the nickname. Yeah. That was probably Is it. that what happened to Smash yeah. Jackson? Yep. Oh, no. <laughs> We gotta stop giving good nicknames. That's why Cameron will be fine. Yeah, Cameron's gonna have a great year. <laughs> Cameron. By the way, the amount of crap we gave the name Cameron on that show, we had the Camerons coming out of the woodwork on uh, the YouTube and I on ain't the Twitter. Scared of no Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> oh no. There was some Camerons at the live show waiting for you. Yeah. The biggest Camerons you ever did see. All right, strategy strategy question uh, from Twitter. Do you have any advice about drafting at the turn? So it would be like the first pick in the draft. If you go wide receiver at the one overall, what are your favorite targets at the two, three turn? Well, uh, we did our last draft, was, mock draft was Jason was at the first. And mm-hmm. uh, so, Jay, you took, you went Christian McCaffrey. Which were McCaffrey, Jamar, Jefferson, whoever you want to take 101, no qualms there. And then I don't remember who you got with your second pick. Do you you recall? Oh, no, of course not. I have no (laughs) idea what happened in that draft. But um, I I will, uh, you know, if you're looking at the two, three turns. It's like Devonta Smith, T. Higgins range. Yep, exactly. That's that's going to be you can take a shot on. One if of the you, onesies. One of the onesies, like uh, Jalen Hurts yep. or uh, Mark Andrews, if you want to take him a little bit ahead of ADP. Um, the the players that I find that I like there a lot that get there pretty often, I, I actually think I remember Tony Pollard got there. Yeah, he got real close. He's usually there. Now, in a, sharp, in a sharper that, yeah. league, Tony Pollard will go higher, but in a normal home league, Tony Pollard will be at the two, three turn. That is definitely going to be one of my targets. And, um, you know, it's, it's tough because I like some of the running backs there. And that might be why you decide if you want to talk strategy, you say, look, I really like Ramondre Stevenson. I really like Tony Pollard. And I want to grab like those two guys, but I don't want to have my wide receiver come all the way at the four or five turn, which is a long ways from there. So you start with Justin Jefferson. So you just got to play it out both ways. Would you rather have a, a Justin Jefferson with those two type of running backs or Christian McCaffrey and then a, a T. Higgins style as your first wide receiver? If I started McCaffrey, Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave. Well, yeah, what would happen? I would log out. Just they would, forget the rest of yeah, the draft. I'd be like, see you, suckers. Auto, auto. I'm all done. <laughs> I, I just heard from somebody on Twitter that um, – accidentally drafted Mike Evans in the first round? <laughs> yes, I saw did that. Did you see that? I did. <laughs> they, they, no, this no. is wonderful. Oh, no. Go ahead. It's, it's wonderful. They they basically queued him up, right, to, to target him. They were trying him. to have a target list. Yeah, which makes sense. Uh, and You're then, starting it way too early. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> but, oh, no. But then in the platform he was in, I don't remember what platform it was, he couldn't. He got mayhemed. He <laughs> co- <laughs> yes. He couldn't figure out how to draft. So he's on the clock trying to figure oh, out how to select the player he wants. No. And because he had Mike Evans queued, it didn't go with like the normal auto draft of like highest ADP. Um, and instead, he got Mike Evans at the first. So how do you not frantically shoot messages? I can't figure out how to do the draft. Please or, pause the draft. Or just take Mike Evans off the list. If yeah. you can figure out how to do that, then you get a better player. Well, well, I hope that works out. That was his response to me saying, draft Mike Evans. And I was yeah. like, eh, that's not what I meant. <laughs> not above everybody. 
everywhere. All right. Uh, this question from Rick McBee says, what is your favorite part about working together as friends? Lunchtime has to be cool beans. Lunchtime oh. is awesome. Lunchtime <laughs> is... The discussions at lunch are eye-opening. I mean, we learn so much it's about the insightful. world, about humanity. We have scrubbed those tapes. <laughs> <laughs> those tapes are not anywhere to be found. And every single day, there is one topic that comes to the table absolutely from Josh. nowhere. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sure, sorry. oftentimes. But it's like, you could never plan it. We don't come to lunch thinking, oh, I'm going to talk about right. Atlantic tuna. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. But every single day, something comes I up. Mean, we, we invented a new laundry machine at lunch. We, we invented did that one. So many things. But yeah, it, we, we patent most of our lunches. The, the, the best thing about working here is you just, I mean, you don't feel like you're working. I had a... a when my buddy was here, he he stopped in, he watched a show, and then uh, we were talking about just the the work environment. And he's like, dude, <laughs> that seems like the absolute best place you could possibly work. This is just the environment. Yeah. This is not the work environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we, just, we just we just go to the environment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's that... you're, you're, you're on fire today. Yeah, yeah man. I know. I know. <laughs> Jason's on show five or six in the last two days. Yeah. And we I'm, just updated. I'm uh, crushing we them. also updated five videos, Al, in the Ultimate Draft Kit, right? We did. Ramondre. Brees. Uh, Bre Javante. Darren Waller. Traylon Burks. Okay. There you go. There you go. What about Trey Lance? Do we need a new Trey Lance video? Yeah, I'll, I'll make a video. Uh, it, wait, looking. It looks like we do not need one. We should have a Trey Lance video in there for the rest of the career. <laughs> yeah, just static. It's just the a, video's just static. It's just a storm with sad music. He got paid money though, right? He did. I mean, he could have been drafted where he should have gone and not got paid money. That's true. He made a good deal on his rookie contract. He will get a Mariota like backup opportunity somewhere. Yeah. We'll see him I bet we see him start a game again. But because not of on injury purpose, not on purpose to a starter. Yeah. Like a whoops, he's starting. Yeah. And then they're gonna hype it up like we have it. He's had years to perfect his craft. <laughs> he's gonna come in and suck. You know, it's the the problem is, and I, I feel like at this point we've been too mean. Yeah, we have. He's better than most people on the entire planet. It's just that there is a gap between better than most and then a starting quarterback, and it's just crazy how hard it is. And if to be a starting quarterback, and if he would have just been the third overall pick with the trade in the trade did not happen it would not feel this bad like he's made 25 million dollars like I, I realize that he's the third string so it's it's not apples to apples here but uh zach wilson the pick right before him got benched mm -hmm. <laughs> he's on the bench right now both they, of those picks are not good no so it's contract situation was fields four or five he was like 11 wait really yeah yeah or not, not the eleventh quarterback, but he was. No, he was, I, I, he was in the double digit rounds. He was. Yeah, I thought he was like six or seven. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just because yeah. that's how we project. He's eleventh. Yeah, that's right. The field hive remembers. Well, I mean, we, we were, wrote that down because when we projected that draft, we projected Justin Fields somewhere between two and four. Yeah, because that's where he should have gone, and that's what we all knew, except for how it looked for the beginning <laughs> of the entire yeah. process. In which case. He looked like the bust as well. Yeah. Trey Lance next year would be basically $11 million of dead cap money. So not sure that they'll just cut him. He'll probably just write out the contract. The truth is that the third string quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers has had opportunities relentlessly. Yep. All right. Enough Lance. I can't Sorry. Handle it. Could, next question. Maybe they'll bring him in as a tailback. Yeah. Oh, oh, like that to, first play. Go to uh, uh, who was our quarterback that moved over to tight end? He plays for Washington. Logan, Logan Thomas. Thomas. It can happen, Trey. I think zero point one percent of people even know that Logan Thomas was the third string quarterback for the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah, and he had a rocket for an yes, arm. Yes, he did. He didn't know where to aim it, <laughs> but he could throw it. I don't think he knew how to aim it. He knew where he wanted <laughs> yeah, to aim yeah. it. He basically took. He stepped back to pass, spun in a circle, and yeah. just threw it. Really and it, hard. And it went 90 yards. 
Uh, wow, I haven't seen one of these in a while. This one comes. Oh, now I see all of our doc changing to questions from X, the other platform. Uh, Ryan Sheets says touchdown only league. Would you draft Derrick Henry, Saquon, or Bijan? Give me Derrick Henry. Ooh, uh, yeah, I'd go Derrick Henry. I'm fine with that. Uh, this question comes from Instagram, Amy Rose 26. If you name a team based on a player, do you keep the mm-hmm. team name mm-hmm. if you drop or trade that player? This examples. Great question. Yeah. Let me give you these three this examples. Is very important. Bed, Bath, and Bijan. Nice. Ooh, good that's name. Good. I like that. Say my name. Say my <laughs> name. <laughs> okay. Okay. Or I'm sorry, Smith Jackson. Uh, okay. Like if you name yeah. them, those are good names because they're fun. Like Bed Bath and Bijan. Yeah, you're probably good because you ain't you ain't trading Bijan probably. Those are great, but the rules are very very clear. Okay. Soup's clear. The moment that player leaves your roster, you, you have, have a, to you have to have a new team name, mm-hmm. and, and you, that is the danger of having the hilarious player pun name. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a sharp blade. Yeah, because you get people with the giggles. But then you look the fool should you move on from that player. You better have a backup for one of your yes. other players on the team. Yeah. Or when you're having the trade, can you trade the rights to the yes. to the name? You can absolutely for trade. For an extra asset? <laughs> I would trade just you part of the Bijan Robinson and the, the name. The name? Bed Bath & Bijan? Bed Bath & Bijan. You can, you can have it. I'll change. You, but I, I want an extra one. Isn't that store bankrupt now? Yeah, they filed. So. Yeah. yeah, they probably don't want that name. <laughs> You can't have any bad juju on your fantasy team. Yeah. All right, moving on. Best Ball Breakdown, presented by Underdog Fantasy. Welcome to the final Best Ball Breakdown, presented by Underdog Fantasy. This whole off season, which means we're ending the off season. We're getting ready for the real season. Uh, we have been spending time in Best Ball Strategy. Concepts, ideas, uh, favorite picks, all of that stuff. So why not take this final best ball breakdown segment and learn a little bit from the best ball Baron himself? Oh, the best ball Baron. New nickname. Got it. That's not bad. You can trade the rights for that, too, if you want. Um, The best ball Baron, Jason Moore, who has drafted more best ball teams than anybody in this entire office. We want to know right here, right now, as you head into the season, who are your most commonly rostered players, and why are they Corey Davis? <laughs> yeah, my my least favorite exposure rate is definitely Corey Davis. I have him in 15.6% of my leagues, which is a pretty high number. Did he just Whoops. become a habitual final pick? He, he was one of the, depending on my builds, if I was looking for a wide receiver at the very end, um, especially earlier in the offseason. I haven't drafted him as much lately, but earlier in the offseason, it seemed like I th- I was drafting him thinking he would be playing on a new team. He would get a new home gotcha. uh, that he would either be cut or traded and that his value would go up from being a, a dead last round pick. I will say, the when I went to my ex timeline, I had no idea that the best ball bros were so into Corey Davis because when Jason get, hit me with the 15%, I was like, what are you doing? And then I go on Twitter and everyone's like, oh, crap. All my Corey Davis exposure, and everyone's like in the double digits. What are we doing here? The thing is, is it's Corey Davis, but he's been very relevant. He's not been a superstar, but he's put up plenty of stats. If he just did what he's done lately, and he's got a quarterback upgrade, he would have been paying off great. Yeah, but he has, he has Alan Lazard and Randall Cobb on the team now. Sure, but he, well, well, he Hartman doesn't. And Garrett Wilson. Yeah, yeah, but he retired, so <laughs> he. So fifteen percent of my leagues just got you one said, wide receiver fewer. So one pit, you just you you burned off a pick. Tell us some that you're more proud. All right, of. Um, one of uh, the guys we've loved all off season. He is uh, always outproducing his ADP, and his ADP is worse than it's ever been. He is Mike's my guy. He's my number one most exposed player, Tyler Lockett. Tyler Lockett. Yeah, baby. Um, just he will refuse to be drafted where he should. And so you'll get him at a value. Other players that I have. It's his greatest gift to the fantasy football community is that those who remain on Team Lockett, we just we just keep getting rewarded. This is I mean, it's very Frank Gore-esque. Yeah. Days gone by. Um, My. uh, So what percentage was Lockett? Lockett was (laughs) 
Locke is 31%. He's in a third line. All in. I I told you guys earlier, I had to make a rule eventually that I was not allowed to draft Tyler Lockett because I was like, I can't not get him. Every time I'm looking at where he's at and the players around Is that your highest? Oh, he's by far my highest. Kyle shot us a note. For for those who are new to best ball and things like that, what, what first off, we're exposure. We're talking about the Al said he, it was ninety seven percent exposure <laughs> until you made the rule. The, yeah. <laughs> the the exposure is like the percent of teams that you have drafted that player, and anything over the twenty percentile mark is it's confidence. Is like you have a lot. You You're part of the fan club a lot. Yeah. What's your next highest? Um, my next highest, I've got James Conner at 24%. Okay, okay, so bullish. Where he's going, Austin Eckler is at 20%. Um, at Quarterback is, is I'm all over the place. Um, I, the only quarterback that I've got like a, a significantly higher amount, because I've, I've taken them all, is, is actually Matthew Stafford. Um, it, wherever I had Cooper Cup, Matthew, that will certainly not go wrong. Matthew Staff. Well, it's just for to complete the stack, and he was cheap. Gotcha. And oftentimes, he's a third quarterback. Um, in Matthew builds. Stafford actually just retired. <laughs> I don't. I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> um, and then at at tight end, um, my highest drafted tight ends, Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews is at twenty percent. Certainly, I, I have. You know, look, we make rules. If he's there in the middle of the third round, he's on my team. Um, Tyler Higby oh, has yeah. been one of my absolute favorites to stack with, uh, Stafford and Tyler Conklin. I've got, I've got quite a bit of him and okay. Gerald Everett. All, all of those guys are, are up there. Oh, some nasty boys. Yeah. Good. Team I'm a, th- I'm a three tight end build late, uh, tight end drafter. Yeah, as the best ball Baron. As the best ball Baron. All right. That was best ball breakdown. Breaking down the best ball Baron presented by underdog fantasy. Get your first deposit matched up to $100 by using the code ballers over on underdog fantasy. That is it for today's episode of the show. Yeah. Speaking of underdog, they are presenting ballers live for the Megala show ballers live.com Saturday LA. It's going to be incredible. All three of us will be there. We will. We will be there. Hopefully you're there. We'll see you on tomorrow's show. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.